Hey out there in YouTube land is Kuda Slayer, aka Daytime Number the Beast, once again. Um, uh, since I did my last episode on how to run Gundam in uh, Mechton Zeta, or at least how I would do it, uh, some people have asked me to go a little bit more into uh, detail about it, and uh, um, you know, here it is. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have a what I'll call a true Gundam um, example to go with. Uh, this is from my Noah campaign, which is uh, very Gundam inspired. Um, main difference is uh, Noah has a few, uh, several more themes that have been added to it since um, the original was inspired by Gundam itself. Uh, but this kind of should get the general idea of how I do it. Uh, also, before I go any further, uh, if anybody has any better ideas, um, I please share them um this is a uh, you know mechton zeta and mechton gaming system in general is a kind of fairly small community um and this is a discussion that we really should have you know just be supportive and at least explore any ideas that might be you know, might be out there um you know please share them um you know i'm not i'm not the End all of end all opinions here. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's some better ways to do it. Please share them. Um, we need the discussion. Anyway, um, like I said, this is the um, an example from Noah to um, kind of discuss some of the the things I talked about in the last video. Uh, this particular unit is the Lepus. It's uh, was one of the first units that was introduced. Uh, it's the uh, A-01 model number. Um, basically, this would be kind of the Zaku-1 analog uh, from, the, from the original franchise. Um, and basically, this is the format I kind of hear. I kind of borrowed from the original books. Uh, so if you're familiar with three of those, you, this should be pretty straightforward. Um, I had added the original dry weight. Uh, to represent uh, what everything would be like if it dropped all the weapons and you know then have uh, any other expendables on it, uh, then we've got the full weight to um, reflect everything at ar as how much it will weigh as arm that's described here. Uh, let's see, uh, three hundred seventy-seven point uh, fifty-four points. That's kind of average for a lot of uh, Mechton designs in general. Especially when it's like going in for the more middle range on the uh, charts, uh, you know, I personally kind of don't like using point values to compare mechs to one, uh, you know, one mecha to another, uh, because you can spend a lot of points on things that may not be necessary for you know, like in other settings. And so, but in general, this is you know kind of average from what I, my experience has been. Okay, um, now let's start getting into the minutia. Uh, the power plant, uh, Babel Fusion Hot. Um, this is the uh, equivalent of the Aminsky uh, reactor uh, from Gundam. The, it has a uh, special rule applied to it called with great power comes great boom. Um, that's a kind of another joke on the um, old uh, phrase from uh, the Spider-Man franchise, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, basically, this reflects the um, the reactor being compa more compact, using bevel particles to contain the, the fusion reaction, and also being able to uh, use the bevel particles to jam, uh, you know, sensors and radar, uh, as the original Miyazaki particles did. Uh, uh, kind of. If you haven't looked at the rules or seen the last video, uh, basically instead of uh, ECM being part of the sensor suite uh, in, in the original rules, uh, the people the per subverse, bleh, uh, dispersion system um, works with the is is mated to the engine itself. So uh, and then each of the three effects that the Babel particles generate is uh, represented by a, uh, a different uh, area effect. 
uh, like here missiles basically missile jamming happens at two hexes um, around the mech then four for sensors and radar for eight um, and uh, since this is the dispersal system works around basically encompassing the mech in um, a field of Babel particles uh, again Manska particles uh, it affects the unit as well so there's a little further down here um, on the um, sensor suites there is a system called the Babel particle hardening which basically is kind of an ECCM um, to kind of counter the effect so at least uh, as the as the unit is dispersing its Babel particles around it to um, form a sh kind of a um, cloaking effect if you can call it that or maybe better just call it a spurt um, disruption uh, it wouldn't its own sensors won't really be reduced to the point where it will be basically blind. It still has a visual range um, to to affect, to, you know, attack with. Um, but basically, that's the other system involved. Uh, let's see, thrusters. Uh, there's at least four different sets of thrusters. Um, this kind of design philosophy I use in a lot of my designs. And other settings as well. Um, I like to kind of break things up so that uh, you know if you lose a limb or a system, you won't really be that uh, fully affected. Uh, fuel, very self-explanatory. Let's see here. Uh, stat boost. Uh, this is what I I kind of use a lot of stat boosting. Uh, with the units and uh, NOAA, uh, mainly since with the Babel particles, uh, units will be kind of rather blind. So there's some um, computer assistance that um, helps the um, the pilot um, be you know detect and be more aware of, uh, of their surroundings. Um, the plus tech uh, boost is uh, kind of using when the you know, systems failures and such. Uh, let's see. Uh, Monaco construction. This is kind of a um, subtle, uh, at least I would call it subtle, uh, feature. Uh, basically, if you're not familiar with uh, uh, engineering, uh, Monaco construction is basically where the body of the machine or whatever you're designing supports more of the weight and the uh, structure than say like an internal uh, internal skeleton. Um, this is kind of uh, something that two people seem to talk about in the original Gundam series. Uh, they kind of noticed that, uh, like especially in the uh, Xeon units, they uh, always seem like the armor plating kind of supports the uh, uh, kind of supports the uh, you know the full structure of the unit. Uh, I kind of do this because uh, I should have left. Yeah, great. I see an editing error here. <laughs> uh, you know, I kind of just do that as a um, kind of reflect more of a generational thing uh, in designs since this is the first, uh, uh, you know, first generations of, uh, of uh, uh, mobile suits or avatars, as I call them in NOAA. Um, they are going to be kind of slower. There's going to be kind of teething problems and, you know, engineering um, design compromises that are due to make things work. Um, as uh, the next generation comes into uh, comes online and in um, in production, I would kind of push the designs over to being the next level up, being semi monocle. Um, and then maybe go on full st uh, standard uh, internal uh, skeleton, which is what the normal rules would be. Um, since I'm on the subject, basically uh, monocle um, adds a, a negative two modifier uh, fire to the maneuver value, and, but it gives you uh, like a 50% increase in uh, internal space. Uh, while semi, it basically gives you a negative one maneuver value and gives only 25%. Uh, bonus for internal space and also gives you a max of uh, negative two or negative one 
uh, when it, you try to uh, you know, increase the maneuver value, you know, like adding stronger engines or uh, more maneuver uh, vineyards and such. Uh, see, an internal automation here. This is kind of supposed to represent the um, basically the computer that works with the pilot. Um, normally, in the background information, you often see them talking about the Gundam Star Mecha itself of the series of having a learning computer, which is supposed to help the pilot uh, kind of work together and uh, sort of kind of work more as one. Uh, although in other cases, you often see uh, it's like a it's like one of the last episodes of a mobile, um, Ape Squadron, uh, where you see, uh, uh, for, I'm drawing a blank on his name, uh, one of the uh, big bad uh, Xeon pilots uh, walking out the hangar with his uh, goof, and the goof is walking right next to him, basically. And uh, this is kind of, uh, I add this to kind of represent the... Uh, Oh, I'm so blank on so many things today. Looking good, aren't I? Um, it was the uh, AMBAC system that's often talked about in the original Gundam franchise. Um, I call it the uh, Third Law uh, Prime Mover. Oh, I can't be right. But anyway, it basically is to kind of give the pilot uh, additional abilities to either you know, delegate uh, certain functions like maneuvering to the uh, to the, the, the the avatar computer itself, or uh, maybe even do like, the awareness, or even um, you know trying to handle difficult maneuvers with zero g maneuvering, and also there's a teach function as well. Uh, I just kind of gave that to you so that uh, the pilot. Can basically, you know, lead, uh, like in the Eighth Squadron episode, I was talking about, uh, you know, the pilot can sh sort of show off as they walk beside their mech as they leave the hangar. Uh, but that's kind of the extra functionality I add to it. Uh, space and EMP production, which is a given. Uh, EMP mainly for the uh, Babel particles uh, effects. Uh, ace. Um, I add uh, a lot of ace to these units because I like seeing uh, Mecha be able to do a hell of a lot more actions than uh, what the normal rules would allow. Uh, so I allow things to stack up as much as possible, especially like uh, adding multiple uh, incarnations of ace and such. Um, the dimensional holster. holster um, that's kind of another special rule. I don't remember talking about that in the last uh, episode. But basically, that's kind of to uh, represent the various clips and doodads and whatnot that are kind of detached to the outside of the, um, the outside of the shell of the mech um, and kind of just make it simple so that you don't have to worry too much about, you know, keeping track of which, of which is what and where. Um, uh, basically, it's kind of similar to the dimensional um, pocket universe, which is uh, in the stupid Mechton rules. Um, but there's the caveat of uh, it does add weight. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, since there's a lot of handheld uh, weapons and special grenades uh, with this unit, uh, it is kind of, uh, again, in the way just making things simple and kind of run a little simple. Uh, a little easier. Let's see. Uh, servo, servo should be pretty much straightforward. Um, you know, got right arm, left arm. A um, lot of design philosophy. You know, since I like to break things down and try to make things a little more um, durable, or at least uh, when you have sustained damage, it's not quite that bad. Uh, I kind of like to take the uh, normal with this uh, assumed to be the backpack on the unit, uh, kind of break it down to at least uh, two, maybe three different uh, servos. Um, yeah, that's just again that's one of my little design philosophies. And I see another editing error. 
I am betting a thousand today, aren't I? <sighs> editing, editing is your friend. Anyway, um, let's see what else is there. Uh, shield uh, should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's a built-in melee weapon into the shield. Uh, again, another uh, melee attack for the unit. Um, in the following, I kind of break down into the uh, what's in the dimensional holster. Um, rifle can be the main the main weapon of the unit itself can be you know slipped on the back and that's spare weapons brought out. Um, I kind of allow um, you know if if if, if you know, the, the rifles deployed. Um, Instead of firing the weapon, um, the uh, mecha can say he's, you know, the pilot can say he's going to hold the rifle in one hand out like this, but he's going to reach for a second weapon, uh, one, you know, like a one-handed, like a grenade or something, and throw that. Um, and that's got kind of another thing I do that's kind of, uh, you know, make things a little bit more dramatic and uh, e easier on the pilot. Uh, let's see. Uh, the uh, Engelfast. Um, um, if you if you don't know German, basically Engelfast means angel's fist. Um, this is kind of a um, a anti ship weapon that was designed to uh, make the uh, basic um, mecha pilot to be more effective against uh, ships attacking. It's basically a scale ten. Um, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank on saying the yeah, original was the Panzer Fist, but basically was a one was a one shot weapon. Um, basically, the uh, the unit carries this one. It's a one hundred uh, hundred kill weapon. Um, if for simplicity's sake, it's kind of spring it's spring loaded, which is I still think it's kind of funny. Um, that doesn't, I didn't decide to use um, some other kind of propulsion, projectile propulsion for it. But basically, it's a kind of one shot weapon that uh, helps with uh, taking out ships. Uh, let's see. Your flare gr grenades, self explanatory. Uh, shroud grenades, smoke grenade, basic smoke grenades. It's basically a kind of bundle. Actually, both these are kind of bundles together. Uh, and you know, take a handful, throw them to get your effect. Um, Cascader grenades uh, is more offensive; can be used as a um, as a mine if necessary. Uh, then the uh, hurl bat basically is the uh, um, uh, is basically the uh, you know the the traditional axe that the um, the Zakus often carry. Um, it also has the throne ability, again, more melee weapon t options for the, um, the mech itself. Uh, let's see. Yeah, um, I kind of get like to give these uh, units uh, uh, kind of a high uh, burst value uh, because I like to give the pilot an option to that no one can, you know, pump a bunch of shots into one hex or one unit. You can sort of spread it about if necessary. Uh, of course, trace around is going to help with the uh, maneuverability and such. Uh, let's see. Not much here. Uh, down here is going to be a kind of a break, kind of a variant breakdown. So you know, short and sweet. If the game master wants to have more of a generic. Uh, background type character to play in the background you know, to bring in uh, let's see I don't know the Vecula uh, probably just butcher that uh, this is kind of a um, kind of a secondary model that was brought in more combat uh, oriented than the original Lippus um, pretty much the same thing uh, much higher speed, kind of better maneuverability. Um, I did go over, forgot to talk about this, the uh, G-Comp Compensator. 
Uh, basically, that's to uh, kind of help the pilot when uh, there's uh, extreme, uh, you know, accelerating to full speed. Uh, it kind of helps with the. Uh, again, I'm drawing a blank of what. Was well, basically it's kind of a body test uh, to help deal with the G forces. Uh, again, um, this time I kind of follow more with the um, the fe design features of what later units would have. Um, having a main secondary um, uh, sensor suites. Uh, let's see. The um, Babel particle hardening system and then the same uh, for dispersal. Uh, let's see. Again, more for stat boost. Uh, internal computer is the internal holster. Okay. Yeah, let's see, um, shield with a uh, built-in melee weapon, uh, main, main rifle, same features as the other, uh, two angle FOSS this time, and then uh, usual suite of grenades. Uh, basically, this was originally kind of designed to be a kind of more of an interceptor unit, or high performance. Uh, you know, more of a step up. It kind of leads to the um, links, which is kind of a Zuda analog to um, as uh, you know an, ev an evolution of design. But here's the um, Mecca. I mean the Zaku two analog um, in the no my Noah setting. Um, I just really love that design. Um, the artwork I hadn't done for this. Um, again, same same mode before. Uh, you know, step up from the Lepus and the the, the Vecula. Again, I'm butchering that name. Uh, same dispersal systems, uh, compensator, more hardening and uh, additional uh, uh, additional uh, sensory su uh, sensor suite. Uh, thrusters broken up, and here's a dish, new feature: the um, after-burning thrusters. Um, basically, this is a uh, another house rule that was uh, br I brought in from the original Micton uh, archive, the rule archive. Uh, everything, all these rules, by the way, are listed in the uh, Noah books, and also I have the originals from the um, uh, the original Micton rules archive. Uh, and I'll have links for everything to the uh, my uh, mega upload account, um, so you can see everything in the original and um, the, the combined uh, uh, correlated uh, rules I have for Noah. Uh, but basically, after burning thrusters are uh, basically can increase their output by a uh, one hundred fifty percent. It burns uh, twice as much fuel. If I remember right, um, again, more options for the pilot. Let's see, monocle construction, internal automation. Uh, let's see, it's kind of the same thing with the servos. Okay, now I'm kind of, um, this is where I saw I kind of get a little more fancy. Uh, shields kind of still the same uh, with a built-in melee weapon. Um, the comp the the main rifle that's used has a built-in bayonet, which again gives the uh, pilot more options. Uh, and also there is a smoke grenade uh, launcher built into rifle as well. It's all mated together. Actually, no, I didn't use mating in this. I just shrunk it all down and just treat it as one unit. Uh, but basically it has two clip carries two clips built into it and then there's additional clips that go with it. Um, but basically has um, you know just imagine a giant rifle with a couple uh, smoke grenades and a giant bay bayonet come out of it. Uh, kind of helps uh, save time uh, for the pilot with having you know switch around this and that. Um, you know, if they get caught uh, blindsided or whatever. 
Uh, let's see, the angle fast. That's pretty much going to be about it. Uh, let's see, what's the next one? Okay. Uh, this is kind of be uh, another version of lupus. Uh, this is basically the more the anti-ship uh, the variant. Um, if you haven't quite guessed by now, um, let's see. I'm trying to remind myself here, everything. Um, not only does it carry a much ginormous gun uh, compared to the main uh, rifle. It also has uh, boosters with uh, additional fuel to help with the range, um, especially when it comes in for the dash attack on the on the enemy ship. Uh, basically, let's see. Before I go down, make sure I'm not skipping over a thing. No, okay. Uh, basically, the um, the Ingo Faust. Where is that angel scream? No? You know what? Um, all these fancy words you come up with just to, to pad out the fluff. But basically, the uh, anti ship rifle is a scale, not a skeleton weapon. Um, has burst value 2, has several, a uh, couple extra spare clips to go with it. Um, I limited the number of shots with each one just to um, kind of put the pressure on the pilot uh, to not. Um, you know, daily dead around and uh, make too many mistakes while on the field. Uh, again, the boosters there to, uh, you know, get them in, get them out, and you know, give them us enough padding to, um, you know, save them somewhat from his mistakes, just enough to uh, keep them alive. Um, there's just some additional things I kind of added to it. Uh, added tracer for obvious reasons uh the anti uh, armor armor piercing and then kinetic um kinetic is kind of one of those weapon um ammo features i don't think too many people use and it's kind of one of my favorite ones uh but basically it's uh, kind of doubles the value the damage value for ten uh for all purposes of knockback which you can cause an enemy target to uh, lose actions and such uh, I kind of personally like like that kind of if you can't you know destroy it outright uh, you know shake them up enough that where they can't respond to you the next turn. Uh, let's see. I imagine people are straightforward on that. Let's see, will be another unit that might. No, I think they should pretty much cover everything I want to cover in this. Um, that's a nice one. Oh. Okay, spaceships. Um, I'm going to do the spaceships later for another episode. Um, let's kind of break things down. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, this is the, um, the units uh, from NOAA. Um, again, since NOAA is very Gundam inspired, this should kind of help um, uh, kind of explain some of the things I was trying to do with it. Um, with the original source material and everything. Uh, yeah, again, this is kind of another reason why I don't talk, I don't like using um, point values for comparison purposes uh, because the, um, that's what the other lupus, standard lupus is like 763 uh, points while we're looking down here because the scale 10 weapons like over 3,000. Um, I just, you know, that's that's kind of one reason why I just don't like using point values for uh, for comparison purposes, um, because even though this could be good against uh, other scale one mechs uh, just from sure out damage, um, you know, it's not going to be, um, you know, it's not going to be your go-to. You definitely want a couple of uh, your regular. Uh, general purpose guys uh, on your wing to um, make you know pull your you know, pull you out of the fire in case uh, you know you get some you know you attack a ship or something that um, and of course everything goes south. Uh, let's see. 
I don't think that should be enough for right now. But basically, this is just kind of should be enough to kind of get the general idea of what I was talking about in the last uh, episode. Uh, if you have any other questions or anything, please leave them down below in a comment or message me directly. Um, I will try to um, do, do more videos covering this. Uh, I'm going to have uh, at least a couple episodes uh, where I go in more depth about uh, NOAA in general. Uh, uh, again, just to, because, uh, you know, it's, I put a lot of work into it, and I just think it's, um, you know, I'm kind of a little proud of it. But anyway, um, yeah, anyway, um, this is Kuda Slayer. Um, otherwise known as Daytime Number of the Beast on this channel. Um, I'll catch you guys next time. And um, again, let's keep the conversation going. You know, that's with a small community as we are. We need uh, to keep the discussion going as much as possible. Anyway, catch you all later.